It is a snowy pattern across central and eastern Kentucky. We'll talk totals in a moment. As crews clean up acres of debris left by the fire at the Bluegrass Stockyards, the owners are starting to talk about where they will rebuild. The big question now, will they stay in Lexington? It wasn't the big game, but Jordan Smith still found a way to get some national attention on Super Bowl Sunday. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon on this Monday. Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. Wintry weather continues to move across the Bluegrass State this afternoon. A burst of snow in central Kentucky left a decent coating of snow around uh, noon today. This is an eyewitness picture from Anderson County, and you can see the ground was covered there. It is just the first taste of what is expected to be a very wintry week. We begin with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey on this first alert severe weather day, and it's putting it down right now. Chris. Yeah, it is. We were looking at our live sky cam just a few minutes ago, and you could start to see some of the flakes coming down. Now look at our sky cam. Hamburg Pavilion, if you know where we are in Winchester Road, boy, this is not very far away. Whenever I cannot see Hamburg again, I know that it is really, really coming down. That's moderate to heavy snow right now falling in Lexington. You know what that's going to do with the sun now getting ready to set and temperatures dropping? That's going to cover everything fairly quickly. And with wet roads, untreated roads, watch for a quick ice up on those roads as we go into the evening. Now let's expand those cams out a little bit. Frank down to 36 degrees. We've dropped it now to 34 with the snow in Lexington. So three degrees over the past 30 minutes with that temperature drop. London, we're okay. Mountain Parkway corridor, you had snow covered roads a little earlier. Okay for now. That'll change up. Winter weather advisory out for all of central and eastern Kentucky through tomorrow night and likely into the at least the first half of our Wednesday. Here we go with the next round or two of snow. Initial batch off to our east. Here's what is hammering parts of the downtown Lexington area as we speak. Those brighter whites where it is really coming down. These are snow squalls that can reduce visibility and cover everything up very, very quickly with additional rounds of snow squalls back to our west and southwest. Now broaden out the view to show you we have additional bursts of snow coming in for parts of Illinois and Indiana. That is the trend, guys, that we're going to be in not only for the evening, but through tonight, through Tuesday, and into much of Wednesday as well. You mentioned this is a multi day event and that's exactly what we're calling it. Not a big storm, but Mother Nature just going to keep throwing little bursts of snow that can add up in time. Chris, thank you. Cleanup efforts continue at the Bluegrass Stockyards in Lexington. It was destroyed more than a week ago in one of the largest fires in Lexington history. Lyle Industrial Avenue is closed indefinitely while crews remove debris there. Our Mark Barber is giving us a look at the cleanup and the future of the stockyards. It's our top story at 430. Cleanup crews say they will finish clearing the debris from the roof of the Bluegrass Stockyards today, and then they will start working to remove concrete. It could take a week to two weeks to finish all the cleanup here, but of course that depends on what happens with the weather. Crews have a lot of ground to cover. The flames that sparked a massive three-alarm fire nine days ago have left 10 acres of rubble. The historic stockyards have been in Lexington since the 1940s, but now that this is all that's left of the operation that was one of the three largest in the country, Chief Operating Officer Jim Akers is considering a fresh start. Small rural communities would love to have a business like this located in their area and you know they're all, uh, they're all approaching this. He says rebuilding in Lexington would be more complicated and more expensive than rebuilding in a rural area. What it comes down to is being where their customers need them most. Anything that, that would take this business away from here is extremely painful to even think about. Uh, there's a strong push, a strong pull to be here. But, but again, I mean, we, we, we owe it to everybody to take time and look at all the options. Akers says the owners had their first meeting a couple hours ago to talk about where they will rebuild and when they will rebuild. He tells me they are on the fast track and they could have a plan within 30 days. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Now, Lyle Industrial Avenue will be closed until crews are able to resurface that road. The city says that will not happen until their asphalt plants open in the spring. It's become common for doctors to cross county lines to prescribe Suboxone, a treatment drug for people who have an opiate dependence. Medical professionals say it's necessary for them to travel to treatment clinics to help patients who don't have access to care. 
But law enforcement officials say that turns into big profits for doctors with little regulation. There's no question with the way the regulations uh, are set up now that uh, uh, both sides uh, can potentially abuse the situation at Suboxone Clinics. You know, the access to treatment is really very difficult, and there definitely are underserved areas in the state of Kentucky. Police in eastern Kentucky say Suboxone is the most abused drug in the area. And tonight on WKYT News at 6, we'll investigate whether doctors are adding to the problem or helping. Amber's in the newsroom now with investigative reporter Miranda Combs with more on that. Amber? Sam, thank you. This is an issue that you have been hearing a lot about for some time. Well, you know, as you know, Amber, we've covered multiple angles to the Suboxone issue, and one that law enforcement kept bringing to our attention was that physicians will leave their home county, so to speak, and travel to other counties and do something outside their background, which is this treatment drugs. And they blame it all on just a lax in the regulations. Right. The DA license to get your Suboxone license is just an eight hour online class. And law enforcement say, you know, that's just room to abuse the situation. However, doctors, interestingly, though, say that it's so needed that these doctors are so needed in parts of eastern and southern Kentucky that the quicker they can get out there and start treating these patients, the better. So there's two sides to that story. And a lot of people may not realize that these treatment clinics are just cash only clinics. And that's because insurance reimbursements are apparently so low for these treatment drugs, like $30 a patient maybe. So they have to, a lot of times, be cash-only clinics, which also for law enforcement sometimes can be a red flag. So it's an interesting topic in the clinics. Uh, there are different kinds of clinics out there. So we're going to break it all down, though, for you tonight at 6. All right. We'll see you then, Miranda. Thank you. Sam? Amber, Miranda, thank you. President Obama wants Congress to open its wallets to help combat the Zika virus, which is spreading rapidly through the Americas. CBS's Omar Villafranca has more. The White House says it needs $1.8 billion in emergency funding from Congress to battle the Zika virus. President Obama uh, Dad, unveiled his plan in an interview with CBS serious. this morning's and Gail King. So we're going to be putting up a, a legislative proposal to Congress to resource both the research on vaccines and diagnostics. In addition to vaccine research and diagnostic testing, the money would help try to control the mosquito population in vulnerable areas such as Puerto Rico, Hawaii, Florida, and Texas. This is done in, in close collaboration with the CDC. There are classic ways you control vectors, insecticides, larvicides, cleaning up the environment. The virus has been linked to a rare birth defect known as microcephaly, which causes head and brain abnormalities. The government has issued a travel warning for Zika affected areas, but not a travel ban. We're not canceling spring break. We're telling people who are pregnant, you know, you may not want to go. The White House says it is expecting Congress to act quickly to pass the funds. This uh, sort of falls in the category of things that shouldn't break down along party lines. Democrats and Republicans should reasonably understand that resources to confront uh, a public health challenge like this uh, is something that merits a serious response from the U.S. government. So far, there are 50 confirmed cases of Zika in the continental U.S. Omar Villafranca, CBS News. The Zika virus outbreak has hit Latin America hardest, leaving thousands of children with microcephaly. He didn't get to fulfill his Super Bowl dream of singing the national anthem, but an Eastern Kentucky native still received some time in the national spotlight as part of the celebration for the big game. And I know he watches me. Oh, I Jordan Smith, who is from Harlan, performed during the BET Super Bowl gospel celebration. He sang the hymn, His Eye is on the Sparrow. The performance received a standing ovation. Of course, Smith shot to fame on the hit show The Voice and went on to become the season nine competition winner. He is now working on his album. It is called Bourbon and the Bayou, and it's benefiting victims of child abuse and neglect, allowing them a change to thrive, a chance rather to thrive in a safe, permanent home. Deanne Stevens is out and about today at Casa Lexington with all the details on the event. Hey, Deanne. 
Hey, good afternoon, guys. I'm just wheeling in some fun and spirits here as we prepare for Bourbon and the Bayou. It is not happening until February 19th, but they want you to get your tickets now because it's a sellout every year. Melinda is with us, Melinda Jamison of Casa of Lexington, and you said that thing's going to be even more full, which means oh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to wheel it in. You're right. It's still coming in. It's going to be completely full, and that's just one of the about 150 items we have for folks. Oh my goodness, this silent auction looks fantastic. Let's talk about some of the big. Items like this one that I'd like to have my hands on. That set includes a chemical pill, microderm abrasion, as well as some products. It's valued at a little over five hundred dollars for one of our local spas. And then the, you were saying the record player. What is this yeah. thing over here? So that is an authentic record player that has been restored by Old Sounds New, and so individuals can come in and make a bid on that and take it home and listen to their vinyls. How cool is that? And then we have some signed footballs. Randall Cobb and Jacob Tammy. So some former. Wildcats that are now playing professionally. And then, of course, I'm all about the Yeti back here that you said is going to be partnered with a few other things. Yeah, the Yeti will be with a green egg, a box of filet mignons, and we want to thank Central Equipment for that Yeti bag. And it will also come with some gift cards for some alcohol. Okay, and great purses, beautiful paintings, all a part of the silent and live auction. Bourbon and the Bayou, benefiting Casa of Lexington. Tell folks quickly what is Casa of Lexington? It stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. And we use trained and supervised volunteers to provide a voice for abused and neglected children in the Fayette County Family Court System. And you said you guys don't have funding other than the kinds of events like this that are funding what's happening with CASA. You are correct, and we are an unduplicated service. Last year, we were able to provide a voice to 345 children. Unfortunately, that was only 26% of Fayette County's need. All right, well, you too can help provide a voice by getting your ticket now and be a part of Bourbon and the Bayou. It is happening February 19th to benefit Casa of Lexington. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Beyonce chose a Super Bowl 50 to announce her new tour. The ad premiered during the commercial break right after Beyonce performed during the halftime show. The 40 day formation tour will kick off April 27th. The closest city to Lexington that she'll hit is Nashville on May 5th. Tickets will go on sale next week. How would you react if your brother just won the Super Bowl? Eli Manning didn't seem to react at all. Cameras were rolling on the Manning family during the final minutes of the game when the Broncos clinched the game with a fourth quarter touchdown. Now, Peyton's family jumped with joy, except for Eli back there. He seemed stunned or maybe a little unimpressed. Hmm. Before the Super Bowl, a pair of Kentucky pups took center stage at the annual Puppy Bowl. According to a Louisville TV station, two puppies from Nelson County's Barktown Rescue made their Animal Planet debut. Optimus Prime and Shiloh were a part of the Team Rough and Team Fluff. In the end, it was Team Rough winning 70 to 44. And on a dog note, first dogs Bo and Sonny modeled Carolina Panthers and Denver Broncos jerseys that were presents from CBS's own Gail King. The CBS This Morning host interviewed the First Lady and the President Sunday at the White House. The Obamas watched Super Bowl 50 with friends, and the President said they had wings and pizza and nachos on the menu. He says a plate of veg vegetables uh, was avoided by most people. Our window to the world, which is right over there in Chris yeah. Bailey's office, uh, really is showing some snow coming down. Chris, that looks pretty intense right now. It, it, it is, guys. That's uh, similar to the snows we were seeing a little earlier in the day. My Twitter feed at Kentucky Weather blowing up with a lot of pics across town. Somewhere out there is Winchester Road. Somewhere out there is Hamburg Pavilion. Look at the snow, though, that is coming down. Visibility is down to maybe 150, 200 feet here at the station. I mean, we're talking about barely seeing the power lines just out in front of where we are right now, let alone seeing out across the Hamburg Pavilion area. Here's your Defender Radar Network, and that's a hefty little band of snow, a snow squall that is right on top of the station. We've got additional snow squalls moving in behind that, and that's reducing visibility. It's going to cover roads, and with temperatures going below freezing, we're going to be talking about some icy spots developing on area roadways. And what you see now is a sign of what is to come as we go through the evening into the overnight with uh, these quick hitting bands of snow putting down enough accumulation to slicken up roads and in some cases completely cover them at least for a while. Let's see if that's impacting traffic right now. Here's Officer Don. 
Yes, sir. It is impacting traffic in the Hamburg area on the inner and outer loops of Man of War. Uh, anywhere from I-75 over toward Todd's Road, reduced visibilities there, and some of the stuff is sticking. Now, outbound Richmond Road, the left turn lane to the circle, is backed up right now because of a two-car non-injury collision. Drive times, everybody's slowing down just a bit. Uh, right now, the interstate's still moving okay. We're watching the bridges and overpasses and exit ramps on 75 and 64 toward Clark County and toward Frankfort. Uh, also, it looks like we're starting to see some slowdowns now on Newtown Pike uh, outbound toward the interstate. Now back to the studio. Officer Don, thank you. A shovel race and an explosion without warning. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. With snow in the forecast, here's a way to enjoy the winter weather. The Angel Fire Resort in New Mexico held its annual shovel race. Children and adults raced down a snowy hill separately to kick off the resort's Mardi Gras celebrations. Although these finishes look a little bumpy or worse, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're told that no one was hurt. That's Just good. Just play acting there. Yeah. A bus exploded in central London on Sunday, but only for a film. Amateur video shows oh. the dramatic moment the bus exploded on Lambeth Bridge. The city reassured the public that the explosion was for a movie stunt for The Foreigner, starring Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan. The sight of the bus in flames and the twisted wreckage caused dismay on Twitter from people who said the public was not adequately warned about that stunt. And I could see Oh, you yeah. started to see that circulating, how scary and frightening oh, can you imagine? that might be. Oh, that'd be bad. All right, glad it wasn't mm -hmm. real bad. Uh, much more to come, especially that weather situation now at 5 o'clock on WKYT.